Okay, so for this next video we have the five whys. So the five whys is root cause analysis. It's it's just a way to figure out what was the root cause of the problem that you were facing. So if you have a mistake or you know an issue that pops up, um, you can use the five whys to figure out what, uh, why that thing happened. So basically when there's an issue, you just ask why five times until you get to the root cause. It's just like the simplest idea, but it, it works very well. Um, it doesn't exactly have to be five times, but just enough times until you have, you feel like you have reached the root, um, or until you have, have um, you know, it, when you ask why and you end up um, getting an answer that is something outside of your control, back up one step. This is also another pretty easy way to figure it out. Um, and really, if you just ask like why something happened once, really you're just going to get um, symptoms to another problem. So that's why you just have to continually ask why. So I have this problem here, the, the light turned off in the shot. You know, it was embarrassing for everyone and want to make sure it doesn't happen again. So, well, why did the light turn off in the shot? Well, it's because the battery died. Okay, well, why did the battery die? Well, it was because the batteries were not being charged. Okay, well, why weren't they being charged? Um, it's because we forgot the battery chargers on the shelf of the truck. So, okay, well, you know, why are they there? So let's put the battery chargers with the lights that they're used for so that when we pull the cart off the truck, we know that we should plug them in. Um, so super simple idea, um, works pretty well. You really need to have, um, you know, people who are involved in the process um, there to ask them why. And, you know, you also need to make... Uh, you know, people need to be comfortable um, with 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 their boss or the people asking why, um, just so they could be be honest about everything. Uh, you know what what happened. So the next thing is the five S process. So this is basically just a, a symptom a systematic way to clean up your workspace. So um, the first step is to sort. So in the sorting process, you just want to look for things. Um, that you use and things that are just in the way. Get rid of all the things that are just in the way that, you know, that are there just in case or maybe you just like haven't used it at all. Um, get rid of it, throw it away, sell it, you know. Um, it needs to be, you know, your workplace needs to be only the things that are needed to do that task there. Um, once you've sorted the workspace and you figured out, okay, these are these are the things that I need at this workspace, then um, you want to set those items in their optimal places. So, you know, like let's just say on a, a set cart, for example, um, maybe you want to, um, you know, you have this one item that you use all the time. Maybe you want to put it on top of the cart where it's easy just to grab instead of in the back of one of the drawers. Um, so, you know, that way you can uh, decrease motion in order to get to the item. Um, the next next thing that you want to do is you want to make your work area, work area look good. So that's the shine step. Um, the shine step is important just because it, it really allows you to see the defects easily. Um, also people do like working in a clean environment and first impressions are pretty important. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're constantly cleaning things up a little bit, you know, maybe you're noticing like, oh, look, there's like some oil leaking here or something. Um, why is that oil leaking there? You know, you can start to do the five whys to figure out what's going on and, and how to fix that problem. Um, the goal of all this, you know, once you've done the sort, the set in order, the shine, the standardized step will help you to get to this, where it's basically that you can tell in five seconds what is missing within five feet of you. Like, yeah, lean, I don't know, they love fives for some reason. Um, so you just want to make it like painfully ob obvious where each item goes. Um, and make it so that somebody who has never seen this workspace before, you know, if things were just like 
completely jumbled and out of place, they could put them back to the original position. Um, so that means, you know, a lot of labeling, um, a lot of, you know, uh, marking, and I'll show you that in some examples. Um, and then the last step is, is a sustain. So you can't just do this once. Um, it needs to be a constant thought. Um, you know, some people will even do like a, a, a daily 5S or even um, they'll do just a, a daily 3S where they'll do the sort, set, and order, and shine. Um, and it, it's just because like your work changes quite often. And as you improve and as your processes, processes improve, um, things change. So maybe you don't need that screwdriver on that cart anymore. Um, you know, maybe, maybe you got rid of all the screws and you started using wing nuts instead. Um, and you don't need the screwdriver anymore. So, well, now you can sort through everything. You can get rid of that screwdriver and, um, and you can make sure that people know that, that you don't need the screwdriver anymore. Um, so have some 5S tools for you. Um, a really good one is Kaizen foam, which you guys saw in the earlier example, which is um, the foam that was used inside of um, inside of those drawers for the grip equipment. Um, the Kaizen foam is great because you can just cut it with a knife and you can make um, really intricate cutouts um, that can fit tools. Um, and uh, yeah, relatively inexpensive and really flexible. Um, another thing is um, Easy Stripe Tape, which is uh, it's a really good product from FastCap that just lets you, um, it's like a PVC tape and you can mark the floor with it. Um, I've used it in, um, in all of our trucks just to mark out where all the carts go. Um, they also have, FastCap also has these Kaizen corners, which are in this picture here. Um, and they're just these little same material as Easy Stripe Tape. It's just uh, PVC corners, um, and you can use that to you know mark the positioning of of small to large objects. Uh, P Touch Label Maker, you, you really can't go wrong with that. Um, and electrical tape, um, I I've kind of started to use electrical tape a little bit more than the Kaizen corners. Um, you do have to use some sort of like clear tape on top of it just to make sure it doesn't get all scuffed up um, and then it actually sticks. But the great thing with electrical tape is that it's cheap. You already have it and um, and there's lots of colors as well, which is nice. So I just have some 5S examples here. Um, this was a before picture. Um, I did fixtures on a job and, um, you know, it's like... Basically, we had all these parts that we always needed before we were keeping them in buckets and it's just a little tough to keep everything that you needed easily grabbable. So I um, managed to get this cart and um, the basically my goal was to decrease uh, all of this excess motion because I kept on having to walk back to our gold room to get more supplies and I was like, okay, I'm just going to have this cart. I'm going to get everything on it. So I got everything on it, and then, um, you know, slowly over time, I did a little continuous improvement and, um, you know, added a magnetic tool strip so I had all the tools I needed. I had some milk crates below with the cables that I needed. Um, I used some Kaizen foam over here and labeled what went where. Um, I had my drill and, and then had some other things here that um, I actually velcroed them down so that they wouldn't move around um yeah so you know just made a spot for everything and um labeled everything that's really it um another example toolbox there you go everything's labeled um and a really good tip that i, I really liked is uh color coding um color coding stuff that goes in a certain area so like this uh, toolbox here we made the brown toolbox. So everything in here is labeled brown. So that way, like if a screwdriver um, comes out of here and, you know, is put somewhere on the other side of the shop, um, we see, oh, that's the brown screwdriver that goes in this toolbox. Um, and then every morning we, we look, uh, you know, in our morning meeting, we, we spend a little bit of time looking for missing tools. 
Um, and it's just because, like, you know, we've really thought very hard about what tools go where. And if even one tool is missing, um, it's going to really throw us off. So, um, so we just have to, you know, do kind of a daily check just to make sure that all of our tools are in the right place. Um, and it's actually been working really good where like, you know, I, and I've had, I've spent a lot of my time looking for tools. And once we started doing this, it's just like, Oh, everything is always where it needs to be. And I always have it. I never look for tools anymore, which is just like an amazing idea. Um, so this is on, uh, our three ton grip truck. Um, originally, you know, we just, we put in the shelving over the top and, uh, for all of our soft goods. And we just kind of realized that like all these soft goods just, you know, they get thrown up there and like, it kind of gets a little disorganized and, you know, we tried to do, um, color coding so that you can look at the bags and see what, you know, what color is what size. Um, but it just wasn't enough. So, um, we started to add in these plywood, um, dividers there you go. Um, and then, you know, after this, I, 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 we even took it a step further and then labeled um, each divider with what should be in each cubby. Um, and so then that way you can go and look and see like, oh, okay, there is something missing here. So uh, makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, I think I'm going to stop there and um, yeah, we'll get into standardized next.